Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm reviewing what I hope will be an incredible piece of rolling stock by Backman. Welcome to another episode of Good Things Come to Those Who Wait, where Backman models are concerned. Today's model first came out in 2019 and the RRP was incredibly high. £249.95, to me that price seemed utterly ridiculous. Now, to be fair, having not experienced the model, I didn't know, and I still don't know, whether the model's worth that amount of money but I did know that I wasn't going to pay 250 quid for it, and I had a suspicion that others would feel the same. And it seems like I was right, because recently I picked up this for £124.96. That is half price. Quite shocking, actually, that that is how much they had to discount this thing before people would buy it. But to my mind, at least, that seems more like the right price for this model. Having said that, just looking at it through the front of the box, you can understand why this should be relatively expensive. It's a brand new tooled item of rolling stock within the last few years. It's obviously massive, and knowing Backman, it's going to be an authentically detailed model. The same can't be said for other cheaper cranes that are on the market. I also know that this crane has the full rigging on it, and you can even operate the crane using some keys. But even Hornby's crane can do that, and that's less than a third of the price. So I really am expecting to be blown away by what this crane has to offer. And from what I've heard, it is very impressive. But today we're going to take a close look at this crane. We're going to see if it's worth the money. Hopefully it will be worth what I've paid. But we'll see if it's worth the full 250 quid too. And also, hopefully, let's enjoy an incredible, hopefully, piece of rolling stock. A lot of hopefullys in this video, but let's see how it turns out. And this is actually really quite exciting because clearly this is not a locomotive and from what I've heard it's not motorised and I'm not even sure if it's got lights on it, I don't think so. Yet, at its full price, it's considerably more expensive than most locomotives really, with their motors and their lighting and their speakers and all of that good stuff. So it really makes me wonder, what is in store? Why should this be so expensive? What features has it got? Well, we're going to find out. Let me show you the end of the box. So the version I've got is 38-800. It is the Ransoms and Rapier 45-ton steam crane 1561S. That stands for Southern, and it is in the Southern Railway Grey. And I don't know if I mentioned where I got this from, but I guess I should. It came from the model centre at 50% off the RRP. If I show you the back of the box, you can see we have a brief history of these cranes in real life. If you want to pause that, feel free to, although I will give you some background on these in just a second. For now though, I've had this for a little while and I've been itching to get in, so let's figure out how we get this out and let's see what's involved. I'm actually a little bit nervous about unpacking and handling this thing, so I'm going to try and pull this tray out and consult the instructions first to see if they've got any words of wisdom. So yes, we do seem to have a big booklet here, which is glued to the inside of the box. That's not so good. Okay, fair enough. Right, so here we go, the steam crane. Right, so first of all, when the crane's moving, you have to lower the jib completely, otherwise it might topple over. That's fair enough. Bit about accessories here. So they do come with NEM couplings by the looks of it although there are some buffer beam details you can add. We'll look at the accessories in just a second. It comes with an operating key, interesting, a ladder and a spreader beam, so it sounds like that might be optional then. Right, jib hook and operation, so it looks like we've got some holes in the back of the crane, which you can plug with a detail piece if you don't want gaping holes in the crane, and you can insert the key into those holes to operate it, so you can operate the jib or the hook, that seems to be relatively straightforward. And we've got some great diagrams here to show exactly what direction you need to twist the key in order to make the relevant action work. So that's all straightforward. We've got some poseable parts here. It looks like we've got outriggers. So it sounds like you pull those out before you swing the jib outwards, at least in order to make it look realistic. We've also got a cab roof, which can be raised, and also a chimney. So we'll have to look at that. That's very interesting etched plates apparently now this is a sign of quality isn't it so it looks according to this image 
as though we've got a massive suite of etched plates for this crane. So if you wanted to fit these, you put those over the presumably printed plates that are already on the model. Over here, we've got a scary looking page. It says, hopefully the crane won't all unravel and come apart. But if it does, this is what you need to do to re-rig it. Oh, please don't let that happen. And then a little bit more on the other page. And I guess this is the final result. Congratulations. Okay, so I think that pretty much puts across how complex this product is. I'm starting to see now why this should be a 250 pound model. Okay, so. It is time. Let me pop the top off and let's see if I can identify some of these accessories because it sounds like there's quite a lot. Ah, these poppers are annoying. There we go. Wow. Look at this thing. Yeah, I mean, this piece is incredibly detailed. There is a lot going on with that and we'll have to take a closer look. Um, but here are the accessories. So, oh wow. Those are a lot tinier than I expected, but look at the fidelity in there. Wow. So yeah, a full set of etched plates and they do look wonderful. They really, really do. So that's a great feature. And then we've got some parts in here that are going to be very necessary. There's the ladder. I can see the spreader beam and we've got the key, which is used to operate the crane. And we've also got fully moving screw link couplings. That's awesome. And also the pipe work and other buffer beam details that were shown in the instructions. So I'll have to get those out later because at the very least I'll need the key. Right, so let's start with one of these small trucks. And wow, yeah, look at this thing. Even on this small piece, there is a lot of detail and a lot of separate parts. And look at this, the turning wheels are actually free to turn, which is deeply unnecessary, but a really, really cool touch. So there you have it, just a tiny little truck, but tons of detail on it. Let's have a look at the other one. I'm guessing this is going to be pretty similar. Yeah, it does seem to be more or less the same thing, but perhaps a mirror image of it, if anything. And again, this is a beautifully presented piece and the quality seems pretty good as well. Not bad weight to that, considering how kind of skeletal it looks. All right, now this is the truck that the jib rests on, if I'm not much mistaken. There it is. And this is a slightly larger vehicle, as you can see. Not quite as much going on in terms of the tiny parts, but we still have some moving parts. We've got this little section here, which presumably moves left and right like this to better support the jib. Wow, very, very complex. And we've not even gotten onto the crane yet. And a little bit of underframe detail as well. Okay, closer look at that later on. And now the star of the show, and I'm gonna have to be very careful with this, the crane itself. Let's see, <laughs> blimey, where to even grab it? Okay, well, I'm gonna hold this sideways because that's the best way to frame it, I think. But wow, yeah, look at this thing. This really, really is crazy. Look at all the gearing inside the crane. I don't know whether this is actually going to work and move when I turn the keys, but looking at the cost of this thing and reading the instructions, I think it probably will do. Right, so this is an incredible bit of kit. Obviously, I can't show you it assembled right here, but uh, I'll give you a bit of background on the crane in real life. I'll do my best to put this lot together, and then I'll guide you through the various features and hopefully show you this crane in operation. The Ransoms and Rapier cranes were ordered by the British government in 1939 and they were based on the 36-ton cranes as had been previously built for the Southern Railway. The crane's boilers would be kept alight permanently, ready to be put into service to clear up derailments or even help with building works around the railways. The builders utilised many stock parts from the major railway companies of the time, including buffers, boiler fittings, axle boxes and much more, so parts of this crane could look quite familiar. The cranes could also self-propel themselves using built-in travelling gear, although this was only for basic manoeuvring since their top speed was only around 5 miles per hour, and this model doesn't have anything like that. The cranes were initially distributed between the Great Western and the Southern Railway, with seven built in all. Today, all but one still exists and can still be found, sometimes even in use, at various heritage railways, where they're still pretty handy for lifting heavy objects.
So here it is up close and personal for you, the amazing Ransoms and Rapier Crane by Backman. Well, sort of up close and personal because I'm really struggling to fit all this into shots. So what I think I need to do first is demonstrate the action features so that I can lower this jib and actually film it properly. So it kind of does work as intended. The idea is that you take this key and there's a magnet in the end of it which is supposed to grab these little plugs from the back of the unit and this really doesn't work that well because the plugs get stuck so this one for instance I kind of have to smack at it and eventually it comes out and that reveals obviously the two keyholes and as you can see there's a bit of flashing on this part which is probably what's stopping it moving in and out smoothly so I think to start with we will lower the hook so that's this one and if I turn this key counterclockwise we get the hook descending and as you can see not only does the hook descend but we've got all of the cabling and the pulleys that move we've got the huge drum with the cable around it that rotates all of the gearing there's loads of gears in this thing all of it moves and we've even got the cylinders and pistons which move as well it's an incredible incredible action feature and then of course if i put the key into the other hole this allows us to move the jib. So if I go again counterclockwise, I can lower it. Now, this is slow going, as you can see. And I'm almost tempted to kind of put this key in my drill and speed things up a bit. But I'm going to resist temptation because that's not good. But um, yeah, as you can see, we've still got the pulley movement. We've got all of the cabling moving accordingly. It's just such a cool motion. And I assume in real life, they're not going to be raising and lowering this jib rapidly. So I guess it makes sense that it is a relatively slow motion. And you do, of course, get to enjoy all of the motion as it goes. So this is working beautifully, but I almost kind of find myself wishing that there was a motor in this so that I could do this stuff remotely, because obviously I'm having to grab it with my hands and turn the keys and you knock it off the track while you're doing that and you've got to adjust things and such. It's a pity that for 250 quid, this couldn't have been sort of automated, but the motion of it all cannot fault it. It's amazing. Right, so now that it's in the lowered position, I can start to show you the details properly. So let's start with one of the trucks to start with. As you can see, it's quite a complex piece. The decoration is excellent, albeit relatively basic, but the running number there is nicely printed on. Plenty of separate details. We've got those turning wheels, as you can see. You've got all of the different beams and such, which have been molded, riveting, etc. You've got molded chains on the buffer beams. These are separately fitted, but they're not real chains. And then we've got the buffers, which are not sprung, but realistic looking. And then, of course, you've got the NEMS pre-fitted, although you can substitute those NEMS for the screw link couplings if that's what you want to do. Next vehicle along, of course, is the crane itself. And this is, I think, the most impressive part of the set. We'll start at the bottom where you can see we've got the full axle box detail, which has been beautifully molded. And the chassis itself has lots of printed detail, including these various plates. And don't forget, of course, if you want the full relief of those plates, you can fit the etched ones that came in that accessories bag. It's this area where we also find the outriggers, and these are a little bit fiddly, but you can just about grab hold of them, and they would support the crane during its operation. Although these kind of jacks on the end of the outriggers, they don't move. So it's really quite difficult to model the outriggers in the extended position because they just kind of hover. So let me push that back in. So as well as the motions we've already seen on the crane, the whole thing can also rotate as well. So as you can see, we've got this movement here and there's even a little gear, which I assume is what would drive this in real life, which spins and turns as the crane rotates. So there's a beautiful bit of detail there. And then we've got the body of the crane itself, lots of detail on this. And you can see inside, we've got some of the boiler details and the various pipe work. A lot of this pipe work is even separately fitted, which is incredible. And obviously it's all painted up too. The chimney is movable. This chimney would be down when the crane was in motion, so it would be in that position. But then when the boiler was in use, apparently the chimney would be raised like that. And then we've also got the moving roof. If I just gently lift this up, you can have that modeled in the up position if you want to. 
And then of course there are the various controls for the crane as well, which have all been modeled. It's quite a detailed little piece of work. And we've also got tons more detailing and different mechanical components and decoration on the other side. It's a tremendously detailed model. And then you've got the jib itself and the structure of this is all detailed as you can see it looks absolutely incredible loads of riveting and little details on that and then of course you've got the other truck which is yeah pretty much exactly the same as the first one same kind of detail on there and then you've got the vehicle which supports the jib and this is obviously a little bit different we've got the toolboxes which are nicely modeled i was almost expecting these to open but obviously they don't although they do look okay You've got the brake handle along the chassis, where there's also quite a few printed details, including the southern lettering. You've got detailed axle boxes, you've got brakes on the front axle, as you can see there, and a buffer beam with a similar level of detail. Now, the couplings between the little trucks and the crane itself, these are proprietary, and as you can see, we've got some decent close coupling there. The jib supporting vehicle and the trucks, though, connect via standard NEM couplings, as you can see. In terms of construction, yeah, it is mostly a plastic build. There are some metal components, such as the hook, which obviously needs to be heavy so that it drops down under gravity when you release its cables. But yeah, the rest of it is just plastic. Although because of the size of the model, it does have a decent weight to it. It comes in at 228 grams, which is about the weight of a small steam locomotive, something like that. So on the plus side, it's incredibly well built. I mean, you can probably tell how well this has been put together. There are no wonky parts, no visible glue, no issues in the decoration. And really that's saying something given the sheer number of moving parts on this thing. On the other hand though, 250 pounds is a lot of money for a vehicle that doesn't have working lighting. It doesn't have any motors to actuate the action features and it's largely made of plastic, like I say, and it's missing features such as sprung buffers. So while I don't think it's worth the full RRP or anything close to it, I think the price I paid of £125 or thereabouts is bang on. This is not a cheap novelty, the likes of which you'd find on Hornby.com. There's obviously been a lot of thought and effort put into this crane in order to make all of these different features work. So amazing model, absolutely incredible. Nothing else quite like it in the collection. And the fact that it all moves and works gives it that extra dimension. It's got play value, if you will, not that this is a toy, but it makes it a little bit more than just a static model. So it looks incredible. Let's move on now. Let's get it onto the track and let's see how it handles itself in motion. So here is today's test setup, all ready to go. For the Loco, I wanted something slow and powerful, and the obvious answer was the 08 Shunter. So there that is. And then we've got the crane ready to be coupled up to and tested for the first time. Now this crane really is not designed to be free rolling. As you can see, it stops itself quite quickly. And the crane itself actually has no proper bearings or anything on the axles. The axles just sit into square slots in the die-cast chassis. And usually, obviously, I'd have quite a lot to say about that. But in this case, I actually think it's fair enough. A it's not going to be part of a massive train. You're not going to be putting six of these cranes together and expecting one loco to haul them. That's just not what they did with the prototypes. And B, I actually quite appreciated when I had this out on my desk that it stayed put and didn't roll away from me. I mean, this is made up of four different vehicles. This one is incredibly fragile. And if it had have gone walkabout and crashed off the edge of the table or something, that would have been utterly disastrous. So unsurprisingly, on the Gordons Hill rolling test, it really isn't great. In fact, it can't sustain a run. I know that sounds a bit hypocritical. Normally, I would be more critical of that sort of thing. But for this specific model, I think that's okay. Anyway, let me back up the 08 shunter and let's couple up to this. And I'm really interested to see how the whole crane assembly will handle the layout. Uh, so that looks okay. Yeah, we've got a coupling. I should also say, I think for the last section, I probably had this truck on backwards. Looking at the photos, it appears to go on this way. So I apologize for that. I didn't notice until it was too late. But anyway, let's do this steadily. We've got the 08 shunter going. Let's go for about half speed and let's watch how it performs. So notably, I've got the jib in the lowered position and I've also got the chimney down. If you forget to do either of those, you'll probably end up damaging the model, uh, especially that chimney. That chimney could obviously be broken off if it goes under something that hits it. 
But there we go, it's handled the second radius quite well actually. And most of my other cranes struggle with that sort of thing. With the jib resting on the truck like that, you do tend to get derailments with, let's say, the Hornby cranes. This one's just done it without any problems at all. So that's actually pretty impressive. It seems very stable. And what an incredible model it looks. They've managed to make this thing work so that you can put the keys in it and operate it. But at the same time, you can put those magnetic plugs back into the thing and it looks pretty realistic. In other words, they haven't compromised the look of the model in order to make it functional. So that is something I really appreciate. Yeah, it's an incredible model. It's one of the largest pieces of rolling stock you can buy. And I think you will have seen from the detail section just how intricate this thing is. So it is incredibly expensive. I'm not sure whether it justifies the full price. But at the same time, it is at least partially justified by the complexity of the model. And the level of detail is just undeniably excellent. Time to try something really nasty then. I'm going to attempt to back this crane over these points. Now, yeah, to be fair, this doesn't exactly strike me as an agile piece of rolling stock, so I'm not expecting much success here, but I have been surprised in the past, so let's open up the points, and let's go steady with the 08, and let's see if it can get through there without derailing. So far, so good. Wow. And the other set of points for a bonus. I mean, wow. That is quite incredible. Like I say, I've had quite a bit of unreliability in the cranes that I've tried in the past. This one doesn't care. It's just gone over those... Oh, oh wait, stopped. Yeah, it's just gone over second radius points without derailing. So if this can do that with the moving jib and everything, then no other rolling stock ever has an excuse to derail on these points. Look at that. Okay, well, that is just frankly incredible. Yeah, even faster, it's fine. Wow, so it's solid as a rock. So with that, let's have some ratings. So the level of detail, I mean, you can let me know what you think about this, but I think it's a five star. The number of different parts on this is just incredible. And on top of that, the number of those parts that actually move and work when you turn those keys is also insane. You've got four detailed vehicles here, every single one of them with moving parts. The crane is obviously the most detailed of all with the moving gears and pulleys and the jib and the hook, all of that is fantastic. You've got a realistic interior inside the crane. You've got screw link couplings to fit if you want to. You've got some incredibly detailed etched plates which you can fit. Oh, the level of detail is just amazing. So definitely five star. I don't think that's a controversial score. Performance, I've given it four star. Generally, it's really, really good. A lot better than I expected. The couplings work perfectly. It's incredibly reliable on the track. It handles tightish curves, no problem. Second radius, perfect. Even on the points, it is perfect. It's not particularly free rolling, but as I said earlier on, there are reasons why I think that's a benefit with this model. So I've not knocked it down for that. It does lose one star though, because those magnetic plugs don't quite work as they should. They got stuck inside because of the flashing and I had to be quite rough to get those out the first time. And the operation is a little bit clumsy, isn't it? You've got to turn those keys. Sometimes the gears jam up a little bit. I think if this was kind of motorized and then DCC operated, that would make it the ultimate performer. But obviously that's quite a nitpick. Generally the performance is fine. The quality I've given it four and a half. Generally it's extremely good. Like I said, there's a lot of separate parts on here, yet it's been assembled perfectly. I didn't see any glue or wonky parts. The only issue I can think of is the plastic construction. I don't think that's a big deal, but perhaps for £250, you'd expect a little bit more metal. But at 228 grams, the weight really isn't that bad, so it's got a good score on quality. So, value for money then. Now, the price I paid straight off the bat, I'm going to say five star. You get an awful lot for your money for £124.96. £249.95, though, I think is a little bit much. Obviously, the model is very complex, but it's not £250 complex. I think if it had motors and lights and that kind of thing, then yeah, it would justify 250 quid. 
So personally, I don't think it's worth the RRP, but there's no doubt that this would have been an expensive thing to develop and produce given the complexity. So I've split the difference there and given it three and a half star. Overall then, that is a great score of 8.65 out of 10 or a grade of B. It's a truly unique item of rolling stock and one of the best I've ever seen. Into the logbook it goes then, and this is the first rolling stock review of the year, so there's nothing else here, but we will see what else turns up. Really, really enjoyed looking at this. What a fascinating model. Well, folks, that will just about do it for this review. I think this is easily the most impressive item of rolling stock I've ever reviewed. I don't think there's any competition there, is there? And Backman produce a lot of impressive models, but not many of them are this impressive. So I might go as far as to say this is also one of Backman's most impressive models. It is incredible. And if you're interested in one of these, they are still in stock at better prices these days. So it's a good time to buy one if you're interested. But apart from that, what do you think about this? What do you consider to be a reasonable price for this crane? And what do you think about the features? Does it do enough to justify the price? Or are there other things you think it could do that would have made it even better? Whatever your thoughts are, please do pop them down in the comments. For now though, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again very, very soon. All right, cheers folks, you take care.